Let's cover the hash portion of the blockchain application next. Pretty frequently, we brought up the necessity for generating a unique hash value for our blocks. This unique hash value for the block is generated from all the data fields particular to that block. This includes its timestamp, its given data, and most importantly, the unique hash value of the block that came before it, which is represented as the last hash. For our hashing function, we're going to use a cryptographic algorithm called SHA-256, which stands for Secure S Hash H Algorithm A-256. The 256 part represents the fixed size of 256 bits for the hash. So let's say that we want to hash foo. The result of a hash of foo is 256 0 and 1 bits. So this is the unique hash value for the string of foo. But most often, we'll see the result in its hexadecimal form. This represents a hash in 64 characters. So every four bits is represented by one hex digit. And the hex digit can be from 0 to 9 and A to F. Therefore, 256 divided by 4 is 64 characters to represent all 256 bits of the binary form in an equivalent hexadecimal form. So overall, this function will have some very beneficial properties when it comes to the cryptographic and security part of our blockchain. For one, even if one character changes in that original data, the SHA-256 algorithm will produce a different hash for that input. But it always produces the same hash consistently with the same given data. Another unique property of the hash is that it's a one-way function, meaning it can generate a hash from the data fairly easily. But you can't go the other way. You can't decrypt that hash to get the original data back. You can't be given a hash result and find out the original underlying data. So again, it only works one way, from the data to the hash. By looking at the resulting hash, it's pretty much impossible to guess the underlying data with an eyeball test. But on top of that, from an algorithmic perspective, it's also hard to get that underlying data, as SHA-256 is built in a way that it's only possible to crack it through a guess and check method. And since all it takes is just one character to change to make a unique hash value, well, you pretty much have to guess everything. And then the guess and check method is a really costly way to try and discover the original value of SHA-256. After all, how are you really going to check every single string in existence? So these properties all together make SHA-256 a very useful and beneficial function to validate blocks in our system. If a set of data produces a unique hash, then in our blockchain system, we can test that data has been tampered with if it generates a different hash from the one that is presented to the one that we're expecting. Okay, let's add this SHA-256 hash functionality to our project. Head back to the project. And per our test-driven development approach, we're going to begin with a testing file. So let's make a new file called crypto hash.test.js. So our new hash function is going to be in a file called crypto hash.js, which we'll make in the future. This will be a crypto hash function, and we can require this from the local crypto hash function, rather file, that we have yet to create. We'll describe a block of tests, and the overall description is going to be the crypto hash method name, followed by its pair of parentheses. And then we follow with our empty function callback as the second parameter to describe as usual. For the first test, let's ensure that this hash function produces a SHA output, or rather a SHA-256 output. To construct this, well, let's gain a little information from the web and look up SHA-256 as a generator online. So go ahead and open up your browser. We're going to want to find a SHA-256 generator. A good one is this password generator page. And this allows you to specify some text and then generate some output. And then what we get is a SHA-256 hash of the string in the hexadecimal form. Cool. So go ahead and copy that and then enter this string in the browser. So go ahead and inspect the console. I use option command J to shortcut opening up the console, but you can also do inspect to open this up. And what we're really trying to do is we're trying to get the lowercase version of this 
since our function in the application is going to get the lowercase version. So once you have the output, go ahead and enter it within a pair of double quotes for a string, and then call to lowercase on the string function. And now you should have the lowercase equivalent of that hexadecimal hash. So go ahead and copy that lowercase version. Once you have that, head back to the test. Copy that in for now because we're going to use it very soon. And the first thing that we want to do is test that the function generates a SHA-256 hashed output. Neat. And now we can expect that if we call crypto hash on a string foo, well, it should equal this output. So let's expect that calling the crypto hash function and then inputting the string foo, well, this should equal the expected result that we have here, which is this overall string. So we'll expect to equal that and also place this on its own line so it's still visible. All right, now this gives us enough to try and create a crypto hash function. But let's add a little more to the function. Let's improve it with some functionality that will allow it to produce the same hash given multiple arguments and those same arguments in any order. This is going to be useful because our block will need to create a hash based on all the fields within that block, including the data, the timestamp, and the last hash, which is multiple fields. But we don't really want to care what order we place those fields in. We want to make sure that it produces the same hash given the same fields. That's what we really care about. So let's make a new test that says it produces the same hash with the same input arguments in any order. Cool. All right, and we'll expect that calling crypto hash of multiple arguments, so how about one, two, and three, is going to be the same result as calling crypto hash with those arguments in a different order. So let's say that it's equal to calling crypto hash of how about three, and then one, and then two. Cool. I'll place this also on its own line so that way it's still readable. All right, nice. With that, we've completed the test for the crypto hash function. So let's go ahead to our command line and then run the tests. So if you already have it running in the background, it should have already picked up the new changes. Otherwise, run npm run test. And the first thing that it's complaining about is, well, we haven't created the crypto hash module yet, which makes sense. Crypto hash .js doesn't even exist yet. So let's make crypto hash .js. All right. And now that we have this crypto hash .js file, the first thing that we'll do is create the crypto hash function, since that is the first type error. Let's set it to an arrow function with no parameters for now. And then we'll also export this function as the default export of the file. And as we save this, well, now we get an actual failing error. So this time we're not getting the hashed output. We're getting undefined, which makes sense because this crypto hash function doesn't even return anything yet. And interestingly, we don't get a failing test for our second one where we expect the crypto hash function to generate the same output for the same arguments in a different order. But that's because we're not returning anything and it'll return undefined in both cases and that should be equal for that second test. So once we write some functionality, we'll expect that second test to start returning red. Okay, so recall that we're depending on this crypto hash function to be able to take multiple arguments and then produce the same hash no matter what. The tricky thing is we can't create a parameter for every single incoming value to the hash if we don't know how many arguments are coming in yet. We can't write one, two, three, four, five. What if there's 100 arguments to the crypto hash? We still want the functionality to be supported. So what we can do in this situation is take advantage of the JavaScript spread operator. So this is written as three dots or an ellipsis. And then we can combine all the arguments into a single array called inputs. So this will gather n arguments into an inputs array into the crypto hash function. So if there's just one argument, there's going to be one item in that inputs array. But if there's five or 100, it'll gather all those items into the input array as well, or rather all of those items within the inputs array as well. Cool. So now to create the actual hash, 
we can use the native crypto module of Node.js. So let's require crypto at the top and set it to a crypto constant. When it's a native module, we only need to refer to the module name. We don't need to go to the actual path. So this has a create hash function that we can use to create a powerful hash object. So let's create this hash object right in crypto hash. We'll call it hash. And this is the result of calling crypto.createHash. And this takes multiple different kinds of string arguments for different kinds of hashes. But the one we want is the SHA-256 hash. Nice. And this hash object has an update function that takes a string argument that will generate relevant hash values within the object itself. So inside, if we use that update function, it'll create a hash, which we can access later. We'll call hash.update. We'll put in the inputs, but this takes in a string. So let's join everything with an empty string, or rather a string with one space. And as we say this, this doesn't get the function to pass just yet, but this does give us a way to access the hash value within this hash object itself. And to get that, we call hash.digest. And the digest is a term in cryptography to represent the result of a hash. And we want the digest in its hex form. So we'll pass it in a string of hex. And finally, we'll return this result. And as we save this, well, now we get past the first test. It's passing that first test, which is checking that it generates a SHA-256 output. But now we're getting a different test that is failing. It's producing different outputs based off the arguments in a different order which makes sense because all we've done is we've joined all the inputs within one overall string. We haven't made sure that it's equipped to do it with the same arguments within any order. But luckily, we can sort that array before we join it as a string. So calling inputs.sort.join should make sure that this test passes as well. And indeed, we have a fully green test suite again. All right, awesome. So that completes the hash function. Next up, we're going to apply this hash within the mind block functionality of our block class to make sure that new blocks have a hash.